Hey everybody, I'm Craig from Estate Bikes. Welcome to the assembly video for our new Estate e mountain bike. Uh, if you just bought this bike, congratulations. Uh, I think you're going to have a great time with it. If you haven't bought this bike and want to learn a bit more about it, you can certainly do that with this video. But mostly we're going to be focused on what happens when you take it home, how do you take it out of the box, and all the steps you need to do to put it together to get riding and riding safely. To talk a little bit about this bike and who it's designed for, it's really a very easy to ride, all round use bicycle. So it is a mountain bike, which means it can go off road, uh, specifically on dirt or gravel paths, fire trails. Um, we haven't designed this for real aggressive mountain biking, but it does have nice contemporary geometry. Uh, so a very stable and good handling bike. It's a little bit longer in the front end than some bikes of the past. It has wider handlebars, 720 mil wide, uh, and a little slacker front geometry, so very stable steering. So it can handle some pretty uh, decent terrain when it comes to going up and down your favorite mountain bike trail. Uh, it has everything you need in the box. Uh, this is how you take it home. If you're not confident, then we do recommend having an expert put it together, possibly your local bike shop. But we're going to take you through and think the majority of people are quite capable of doing this and getting out and riding safely uh, by following along this video. So when you get it home, the first thing you do is open it up and you're going to take a look um, for this box that's inside. And this box has some really important parts. So number one, you do have an instruction manual. Uh, so if the video is not educational enough for you, then do refer to that. That details everything about putting the bike together. Um, but most importantly, you get this little bag of tools. And this is all you need to put the bike together and get up and running, other than maybe a pump for the tyres um, to set the right tyre pressure. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll start taking this out of the box and, uh, and then we'll show you what the next step is. Okay, for our first step of putting the bike together, um, now you've got it out of the box and we've got it up on this table here to make it a bit easier to see, but you can do this on the ground. We have a choice of either putting the front wheel on or fitting the handlebars and controls. Um, we're going to fit the handlebars and controls because that makes it a little easier for us than we can be able to turn the bike upside down and, and put the front wheel on and do a bit of adjustment of gears and brakes. So we need a little allowing key here and we need to take this front cap off the stem. So we need to undo all the bolts <coughs> and, uh, and take it off. And we just need to pay attention to the way our, our cables run. Take that off and put it aside. And then take your handlebar. The orientation is this way, lead is facing forward and the handlebar bending in an upward direction, the rise. And we want the cables to run around the left hand side of the bike here particularly paying attention to this brake cable, but that's not in the way. The handlebars have a marking for the centre of the handlebar, which makes it easy to align. So sometimes this is easier with a second person to help you, but we can, we can do it single-handedly. Um, get this stem in place. Just need to get a couple of bolts started to hold it. And then we can show you the different adjustment you can do your handlebar position uh, and how to get it lined up and in the best position for you, uh, comfortable. <clears throat> Just be careful with these not huge bolts, they're five millimeter. What you don't want to do is ever do them up too tight. I'll show you a good way of, of getting the right firmness to your bolts without having a torque wrench. The professional would use a torque wrench with a very specific level of tightness. Now I'm using that adjustment in the middle there, that marking on the handlebar to kind of line it up. So start to tighten these and then we'll do the final adjustment. So hold it in place. Right, about like that. And now what, what you can do, you can change and mount the handlebar, we call it roll, this position forward or backward. It's going to change the angle of your grips, change the height, and change the way the bike feels a little. I generally try to line up the rise of the handlebar with the angle of the forks. It's a starting point, so about like that. Again, you can adjust this at any time. I'm just 
just get in the middle, my crosshairs lined up, and now I'll start to tighten these down. I'm using the small end of the Allen key to start, so I don't put too much pressure on these. Then I'm going to turn it over and just use a finger or two to make it reasonably firm without going crazy. Again, if you do it too tight, you run the risk of stripping out the alloy stem. That's no good. So about like that, two fingers is a good indicator for this. Definitely don't want it to slip, but you don't need too tight. Okay. Now we might move on to putting the pedals on, and then we'll put the front wheel on and we'll do some adjustments. Okay, now we're going to put our front wheel on, and to do that, in an easy way, we're actually going to turn the bike upside down and rest it on the seat and handlebars. One thing I'm going to do is just take this controller, our electronics controller, and rotate that down out of the way, um, so we don't damage it. Turn the bike upside down like so. Now we have easy access to our, putting our front wheel on. This is just for transport, these bolts are on here now, so let's turn those off. Take this out. So we'll take our front wheel. Again, on our front wheel, we've got bolts here. And we're going to loosen them off. We've got a little safety washer. The safety washer has a little tab on it. Pay attention to that. Yes, that little tab is going to go into this hole on the forks. Make sure that if the bolts come loose, your wheel still has something to keep it in place. Because you don't want the bolts to come loose. You're doing it. When you put this front wheel in, the only thing you've really got to pay attention to is making sure that those washers are outside the flange and that your disc brake. Fits into the caliper. Right off. So. Let's get off to get the washer out of the way. There it goes, it drops into place. And as I said, hold that, that little tab on that washer the hole, do those up, tighten it, Maybe just make sure your wheel is spinning and it's definitely centered, there's not much adjustment there, it should be completely seated, don't worry about the brake, I can hear that brake rubbing at present, uh, but we're going to make some adjustments to line that up, a little bit of that is okay, then using our spanner, Tighten these. These should be reasonably tight, much bigger bolt than like your stem bolts. Um, but again, you don't need to break your arm. Just reasonable amount of force, like so. Um, it's something you pay attention to when you're riding, but it certainly shouldn't come like that. Okay, our wheels in place. We might go next and start adjusting our brake calipers. And let's see if we can get them lined up so we don't have any rubber. Okay, to get our bike running really well, what we're now going to do is adjust the brake caliper alignment. Um, when I spin that wheel, you can hear that the disc is rubbing on the pad a little, and it doesn't spin as freely as it could. Now, you don't have to do this. And one thing I will say, when you're adjusting brake calipers, make sure you tighten them back up and feel reasonably confident in what you're doing. Um, what we're going to do is, is try a little, a little hack to get them aligned easily um, just so we don't have any of that friction and we have the best riding experience. So I'm going to loosen the two main brake caliper bolts. I'm not going to undo them completely, just going to loosen them off. These have quite a lot of adjustment. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull the brake lever. Just to make sure that caliper's loose. I'm going to hold it on a little bit. So it's rubbing on the disc and rotate the disc. And I'm trying to get the caliper to 
kind of self-align. And I'm going to hold down that brake caliper, that brake lever, so my brake is locked on pretty tight. And then cinch these back up. And I'm going to spin and see if we can move the caliper in the right position. Much better. You see how much freer that's spinning. Still got a little bit of rubbing. I can actually look through the back of the caliper here. If I want to really manually adjust it, I can tweak it a little bit. You can see it's still going tiny with that one. But you know what? That's pretty good. Any difference you make from that point is going to be really minor. You do the same thing on the rear. The rear caliper is here. In this case, straight out of the box, pretty good, barely touching. So I probably wouldn't change that at all, to be honest with you. Now we might do a bit of testing of gears before we go and get ready to start riding. Okay, now we're just going to check our gears. This bike uses Shimano 7-speed gears, um, steel cassette, steel chainring. Uh, should be very long life without needing much maintenance at all, but Cables do stretch and adjusting your gears so they're shifting well, um, probably key again to a great riding experience. Uh, it uses a shifter on the right here, it's called a rapid fire shifter, a simple sort of trigger switches that shift gears up or down. I'll show you how that works when we're simulating riding up here on the bench. Um, press with what's effectively the thumb when you're riding and you shift to an easy gear. You can see this is shifting nicely, clicking up the gear each time. A little bit of skipping there. So a little bit of adjustment would be good. So while that's skipping, I'll show you the adjustment. You've got cable adjustment here at the shifter, or another one here on the derailleur. So that's pulling the derailleur a little bit much. So we're gonna wind that anti-clockwise. We'll just try two clicks. adjustment on the derailleur. Um, so you may need to do that after you're riding. If you're riding, your gears start skipping, they're shifting smoothly. These are your two cable length adjustments that make a big difference to how that shifts. There are more adjustments on the derailleur, limit switches, etc. But I'll leave that to you if you want to play with that to go searching and find some how-tos on how to adjust Shimano derailleurs or your local bike shop, of course, an expert at doing that. For most people, you shouldn't need to unless you're getting into changing a cable or something long into the future. Um, that should work really well. Okay, we've got the bike off the table. Um, we're getting close, almost ready to ride, just some final adjustments. We put air in the tyres, so in this case about 30 psi. Um, 30 is a pretty sort of safe number if you're riding on a bit of dirt and gravel and on pavement, um, grass, etc. You could go a little bit softer than that if you're only riding on dirt or if you're a lighter rider. Um, you could go higher than that if you're only riding on pavement and you want good, efficient, low rolling resistance. Um, but 30 is probably good with these for, for all round use. Really important for riding position is adjusting the seat height. Um, if you are riding off road and just tooling around, then a low, comfortable seating position. You can see how short the seat chip is on this frame to let you get the seat right down. So even shorter riders can put both their feet on the ground and feel nice and safe. But if you want efficient pedaling, um, you want to adjust that seat up a little higher. Um, the most efficient pedaling is when the pedal's at the bottom and your leg's on it, but your leg's got a slight bend to it. Um, 
again, if you're riding a long way or, or want to maximize your own energy, then that's the way to set it up. One thing about this, this is a quick release where you just pull the lever and close it to adjust the seat. But I can see by the feel of that, that it's probably not tight enough. In fact, even with it closed, I can move the seat. So we need to tighten that up. So to do that, you loosen this quick release off, leave it released, and then this other side here, turn it a little bit clockwise. I'm doing up and up. I turn it a bit, and then try closing it, still too loose. I can just feel that it's, it's too loose. So I'm gonna tighten this a little more. Come back again. Right, now it's feeling firmer, and now I really can't move my seat, so that's about enough. But that's that adjustment, as well as the main quick release lever. Um, so make sure you get that right. You might do that to see this a little bit high, maybe around the end um, for this. But now we'll go on and we'll just check our brakes and do some adjustment of our lever position. All right, now before we ride, we want to feel comfortable with the controls. So we're going to adjust the angle of these brake levers. Um, there's a screw on the top here, or an Allen head, um, which we can loosen off. And none of these you should ever do too tight. And then move the lever, that lever's loose. But on this side, we've got to adjust our shifter as well. And you won't see it on camera, but there's another adjustment for it on the back here. Uh, loosen its adjustment off as well. Right. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is angle them down about like this. So this is personal preference. Some people like to ride with the levers up horizontal. Generally, what I'm going to say is when you're sitting on the bike and the angle that your hands reach the bars is line up the levers in line with your hands. And that's a comfortable riding position. So for me it's about there where I like to ride. And I can tighten this up again. And don't go crazy, sort of one finger. And this adjustment on the shifter as well. And what I'm going to do is adjust the other side to match. So, loosen this off, rotate it down. Get a look out there. And tighten it up. Now, these levers are a full lever that you can use your entire hand on. Some people like to brake with only two fingers. You've got strong brakes, even one finger. Um, you can then adjust this also by loosening it and slide it further along the handlebar to change the position of this lever relative to the grip. If you want to grip on the end and only use two fingers, for example, or one finger. We'll leave this as is at present. Again, keep in mind, this bike is designed to be easy to ride and very safe for people that don't have a lot of experience riding bikes. Um, so comfortable, good controls, very reassuring um, and of course being an e-bike it means you don't have to be very fit or have a lot of strength in your legs to still do a pretty considerable ride and conquer pretty big hills. Um, the gearing in fact is designed for all around riding so the e-bike assistance on this bike um, as per Australian regulations works up to 25 kilometres an hour. That doesn't mean that's the top speed of the bike. Um, if you're going down a hill, it will certainly go faster than that. Um, if your legs are strong enough, you can pedal faster than that. But it really is about providing you that assistance uphill and to get you up to speed. Um, and so then you can comfortably maybe cruise at around that speed um, if you're commuting or, or doing a decent length ride. Um, the front suspension fork takes a bit of the shock out of the road or the trail, um, gives you a bit more front end grip and makes it comfortable. And we spec a pretty big comfortable seat here. so. Again, even if you haven't spent a lot of time on bikes, it's going to be a pretty comfortable, easy ride. Um, now that we've got our brakes set up, in terms of angle and feel, what we've got to do is have a feel of them and make sure that they feel solid and reassuring. And we've got a bit of adjustment here at the cable um, to make sure that's the case. So, left brake on the rear, and when I pull that and give it a good squeeze, I've got quite a lot of room still to the handlebar. So this is pretty well set up, and you'll see that's, that's gripped that rear brake. Um, there's an adjustment here, if that's not the case. When I come to the front brake, you can probably see this pulling almost to the handlebar. 
So that's probably okay. We can ride like that, but it's not ideal. So I'm going to move this adjuster here on the cable and turn that anti-clockwise and extend that out. The nice thing about mechanical brakes like this, it's easy to adjust. They use the regular cables. Now I have a try. Now that's much better. I've still got quite a lot of gap to the bar, so in a, in a real panic or real hard stopping, I can really pull on that and not reach the limit by pulling it to the handlebar. I might widen it a little bit more. I'll just lock that down. So that feels good. Well, one tip about braking, and when you first ride, the most important thing you should do on your first ride is test the brakes and make sure you know how to stop the bike. Um, know the balance between rear brake and front brake. Front brake will do the most stopping, but you've got to be a little cautious. You don't want to pull it too fast and too hard and lock up your front wheel. That'll almost certainly lead to a crash. The way to brake really hard, like in an emergency or when you really need to stop, is to squeeze the brake levers. Not to grab them, not in a real jerky fashion, but to squeeze them and put them on progressively. And that way you'll brake the most with less chance of locking up the wheel and keeping you under control and coming to a very rapid stop. These brakes, these disc brakes, they take a little bit of bedding in. So maybe the first few kilometers of using them, they're not going to work quite as well as what they will once you've done a few stops and embedded in the brake pads, similar to a car or anything else with a disc brake. Um, but certainly we say on your first ride, the number one objective and ride in a safe place is to get a feel for the brakes, make sure you can stop the bike, make sure you feel confident before you head out on the road or at any other place where there might be more dangers around. Okay, now we can go about fitting our battery and getting ready for our first ride. Um, this is the battery we supply. Um, has a key which locks it onto the bike. So once you install it, then turn the key. You can't remove it off the bike easily. Um, there's an on-off switch here and there's a charging port. You can charge this either on or off the bike. Um, key, you know, with all e-bikes is not to charge it unattended and to uh, remain in close distance from the charger and the battery while you're charging. Um, we do get some people now who, being extra cautious, will charge their e-bike outside um, and really want to charge it in the rain, but that's okay. Um, to do so if you, that makes you feel better. Um, there's a little port there to cover that. If you turn the battery on and then press this little button on the top, it shows you your state of charge. So in this case, we've got one red, three green light, so we're basically fully charged. Um, I'll switch that off, slot that onto the bike pretty easily, just like so. Turn the key, we lock that on, normally you would take the key out. Now I'll turn the battery on come up to my control panel on the handlebars and press the power button on the top left. This shows you now your battery level, four bars. So we've got battery and then plus and minus button control your level of power assistance. Um, so press the plus button and this light down the bottom will go to the medium, medium setting, three settings. Press it again and go to the highest setting, most amount of power. I strongly recommend on your first ride, or first rides, using the lowest power setting, the lowest amount of assistance. This bike has 250 watts of power assistance, a reasonable amount of torque. Um, you know, there's a lot of torque around how much people need. Uh, that's the limit of Australian regulation, 250 watts. And you will find if you've never ridden an e-bike before, you'll probably be surprised at how much power assistance that is. And the thing with on a bike like this, it monitors pedal revolutions. Um, the motor's in the rear hub there. It takes a little bit of time for the power to kick in. Maybe one revolution of the pedals. Doesn't sound like much, but there is a delay. And there's a similar delay when you stop pedaling for the power to come off. You can override that at any time by grabbing the brake. Grab the brake and it has an electronic cutoff of the motor. Really important that you know how to stop. Because when you first ride, the power can come in and be a little bit unexpected. The bike suddenly, well, almost feels like it wants to take off. So be ready on the brakes, 
make sure you're in an area where you can ride in a nice open with plenty of space around until you get comfortable with it. You will quickly get used to that kind of lag when the power comes in and when it switches off again and how you come to a stop. Again, the brakes are your most important friend. You've got to feel comfortable bringing the bike to a stop no matter what, at any time, using your brakes. If you don't feel comfortable braking, don't ride in an area that puts you at any risk. Um, you can ride the bike without any power. You can turn that off and ride it like a normal bike. Press and hold and practice changing gears, riding around, etc. with no power. Again, practice your braking until you feel comfortable and then turn the power on. Of course, if you're doing a long ride and your battery goes flat, you can still ride the bike like a normal bike, no problem at all. Um, but really, really important, again, I can't stress enough, make sure you know how to stop the bike and you feel comfortable with the brakes um, before you go riding. Um, always wear a helmet too. Um, pay attention when you're riding. It's a, it's a very enjoyable sport, bike riding. They're great for commuting, great for the environment. Um, and e-bike makes it so accessible for everybody that that we're confident you can have years and years of enjoyment with your SAD mountain bike. Um, but be safe and, uh, and take care of yourself while you're riding too and do respect the bike and the terrain that you're riding on. Okay, so you're almost ready to ride. We do provide another couple of accessories, reflectors for front and rear that you can put on the bike and a bell, which actually in some states is required, let people know that you're coming by. These very simple to mount with the tool and go around the handlebars or on other parts of the bike. Um, you've adjusted your brakes, adjusted the angle, adjusted your controls, adjusted your seat height, got some air in the tyres, adjusted your gears, charged your battery, you're ready to ride. Hope you enjoy it for many years. Thanks for choosing an estate bike from Aldi. And we hope that, uh, that this brings you a lot of joy for a long time and you really enjoy your riding.